Welcome to Limit Break X on Lama Ladonna. This is quite a difficult one and I'll try to do the best with the most greed that we can go for. By greed I don't mean gold, but being greedy. We could also do this on Missing No when we roll for an X, but I mean the stats are randomized, you know, <laughs> so that's a bit... I don't think that would be good. And obviously we will play on the library. And I will do something that, ooh, oh, that is amazing. I will do something that I usually don't do. I will rush over to the Empty Tome and get it ASAP. The weapon is so horrible that you can't really farm the enemies either way. Like, it kills three enemies per X, which is great if it happens. But yeah, there's the if, you know, most of the times it doesn't happen. Uh, that's great. Tronos Box, that is actually great. Thank you. Um, things that are really good on the weapon are NFT. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, what makes this weapon really good is if you pick something up that doesn't belong to the weapon. No, but early on you kind of need it, and if you don't get it, you have a problem. And I will have a problem because I won't get it. I'm moving around, so I will only super rarely walk into the candelabras. But it, trust me, with Empty Tome, the weapon is actually decent. It's good. Without Empty Tome, the weapon is, um, yeah, don't expect to level up a lot. Now with Golden Axe, the whole story changes. The weapon becomes the strongest weapon in the game, since it has the best scaling out of all the weapons that exist. But without them, you know, if you... Oh. I actually didn't consider going for Duplicator, since we will have enough amount either way. But given how weak the weapon is early on, having plus one amount could be in uh, incredibly good. This will mean I will not go for Spinach. But I don't even think we need the bonus. What is a 50% bonus on 150% might that we have right now, here? So in total we have 249%. Going to 300% is only a bonus of 20%. That is not a lot. Given that it either way has an incredible scaling with Slash, I, I don't think I care too much. And X, one more projectile, very good. We are about to hit the first empty tome. And this is hopefully where we see a shift. One and a half minutes in, I would say this is good. The alternative would have been that we wait until six minutes when the bad wave spawns and then we walk over. Uh, but, but trust me when I say this, you waste so much time that it's not worth it. Once we have the empty tomes and especially once it's maxed out, we will farm the enemies like crazy. But up until then, you barely get any kills and you just fall behind further and further and further because you keep taking more damage. Empty Tome, very good. Don't trigger the Guardian. That is a very annoying boy. Okay, there we go. Hopefully no, this doesn't trigger him. Very good. Regarding Curse that we have over there, I will see how we perform with the weapon if we eventually get it big enough that I can just freely walk around or not. That will entirely rely on those resources. Weapons like the Axe, and as you can see it now fires constantly, Weapons like the axe are always complicated to do, since they tend to take a very, very long time to become strong. Immediately wanted to pick up the crown there. And this makes it difficult overall to deal with them, you know, to not die. That is a bigger problem. But I will focus on the axe overall to make sure that I get the penetration in, since I can then just stay at the bottom here and let it shoot constantly and kill everything. That means first priority, penetration, second priority, bonus area, third priority will then be curse, yes. Now the thing is we already have a permafire pretty much and this is why I question whether duplicator is actually good or not. It might be good, don't get me wrong, I'm just not totally convinced that it's good. And yeah, we will very quickly kill this boss by the way. The X has a ridiculous amount of damage. And I have a question for you. Do you remember the time when you started playing Vampire Survivors? In the very beginning, what was your go-to favorite weapon? Maybe not just the favorite weapon, you know, but a couple of them. Because I do remember for me, I actually believe this was the X. Since it took a while to unlock garlic for me, uh, there we have spinach, no, but I didn't want spinach, there we go. It, di it did take a while to unlock garlic with all the chickens, and the axe is just amazing. Just thinking back, the main problem- oh, the kind of Labrador, very nice. The main problem with axe is that- ooh, ooh, don't freeze them. That it can't really hit a lot of enemies, and when I started, the weapon had less penetration. Like, I think it only penetrated two enemies instead of the three that it starts with. I might even be wrong, and the penetration in the beginning was only one enemy. Uh, that was it. However, it was exceedingly strong against one particular enemy. Okay, bosses in general. But also, do you remember the green guys from the Mad Forest that spawned at 5 minutes or so? That are incredibly tanky and super hard to deal with. 
Look at the damage that this weapon deals. I mean, yeah, in the beginning it's like 70 or 80 that it deals, but it melts them as only weapon. All the other weapons struggle with that so much. And that is where it was amazing at and why I loved it. Uh-oh. Don't, don't trigger that dex. Go back. Just, just keep your distance. It's all good. But yeah, most of the people that have mentioned what weapons I liked in the beginning, I think most of them said they liked King Bible. This is one weapon that you get very, very early, so it's understandable. But this is why I'm saying I would like to know more weapons and just only one particular one. And I'm curious to see if there are some people that say, yep, X was my favorite. That was my go-to weapon or the weapon that I used after I got the main weapons or something like this. Would be interesting to know. So as you can see, right now we are at a point where our X is already, I would say, decent, you know. But I want to talk about a couple of things. One, why didn't I go for Brazer? Well, we don't really have fit for it. Otherwise, I would have went for Spinach if I had a free slot. Uh, but mainly, I don't think the speed is good, to be honest. It makes them shoot way further out. There used to be an issue where the X can go so far up that it just despawns at the top here, meaning it never comes down. I don't know if this has been solved, how it is right now, uh, but yeah, that's why I don't want to take Brazer either way, regardless. Let me get the chest here, thank you. And the other thing that I want to mention is, you see how we have Ken Labrador, right? And I have a maxed out X, that means I will have Death Spiral. No, we won't have Death Spiral. I did remove that part in the code that makes it evolve. Oh my god, Pierce plus one, perfect. I did remove that, but before you say, Dex, that's not fair, I can't do the same thing that you're doing if you mod it. Hold your horses, you can do exactly the same thing. Either you banish it on level 7, which will take away 20 damage, that is true, but it will not evolve, or, easier, you don't pick up chests. The thing is, you know me, okay, I talk about all kinds of things, amount, very good, then I miss on major things, like for example a boss walking into me, or I see a chest and I'm like, oh yeah, let me grab the chest, and suddenly it's a wolf. You would pay attention to this, but I'm talking, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm paying attention to multiple things, and suddenly I mess it up and have to start over again. So that is the reason why I did that. We have more area, very good. You might be wondering why I'm doing this, but next wave you will have a bonus of 100% curse. And I have to make sure that I have a very, very strong weapon that deals with the enemies and they don't overrun and kill me. That is also one of the main reasons why I said I want to have Empty Tomb as early as possible, that I can start killing the enemies and level up. I did a test run before this, and I think I finished the test run at around level 20, but I was at 8 minutes or so. We are at 6 minutes and we have level 44. Do you understand how insane this difference is? It's incredible. And there we go. To be fair, a lot went wrong in the test run as well, so you can't blame everything on just the axe being slow without empty tome early on. But it was just incredibly bad. Let's actually see how... Do, are we shooting double axes? Wait, we are shooting double axes. Do you see that? We are always shooting out two axes at once. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's so cool. Man, I just love playing Limit Break weapons because there's so much to learn about weapon behaviors, game mechanics and stuff like this that you would usually not see in the game. Oh, 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 okay, careful. We have enough peers to kill them and this is the reason why I wanted to manually do the amount and peers. If I wouldn't have done that, <laughs> the axes would just disappear and the enemies rushing into me and I would die. Okay, um, yeah, but this is still a bit problematic. Maybe I will just wait until I get Slash. That is a ginormous power boost to the weapon. I think the crit chance is 30% base, multiplied with our luck, which is 40%. Yeah, f uh, 40%. I'm not gonna do the math here because for whatever reason, I always do it wrong, despite it being super simple. I just suck at multitasking, okay? But uh, rough estimate, 40% uh, is almost 50%, and 50% would be 45%. I think it's 42% if I'm not mistaken, but something around that line, okay? Every other hit will critically strike pretty much, and that is good enough for me. Oh my god, look at the axe. I wonder if eventually we will shoot out three axes at once, if we get enough amount, or if this is just cooldown reduction based. Okay, could you finally die, please? Amount plus one, very good. Penetration and speed, the limit break stats by the way, they both have a limit that you can get to. So they will eventually disappear and that means the only three level ups that we will have are area, amount and might. 
I don't know why most of the things are limited, but for whatever reason, amount is not limited. Like that it says eventually, you can either way only have 50 axes on the screen or so. I actually don't know what the limit is right now. So what is the point in going beyond 50 amount, you know? Just put a limit there or even a little bit earlier. Oh my god, luck is amazing. That now puts our crit to 45% on the spot. Nice, but I mean, once we get slash, you know. But yeah, I don't really fully understand this, why that is not a thing. Oh. <laughs> we just we just melted him. This is the secret. Wait, what is going on? This is so amazing. Did I just focus so much on the guardian that I didn't realize the pattern that we create here? It's a bit like a fire hose, like a flower garden. Well, not guard, but like flowers blooming up and exploding. What flower blooms up and explodes? I mean, there are exploding flowers, but like blooming up and exploding right away. I, looking like this. <laughs> That's fine. It's okay. I gotta be honest. I expected this to be incredibly difficult. And so far, it's actually really simple. So far, okay. We are still not killing all of the enemies. I wonder if there are still penetration upgrades left. I would expect so. But I think at this time, even... Like, I walk through them here, right? And they don't kill me. They don't even harm me. I think I can just randomize now. Maybe I will go for a little bit more penetration to make sure that I have enough. And that rather that I kill more enemies, you know, I want to make sure that I kill all of them. But aside from that, that looks amazing. And we are at 230% wow, curse. Now, while I do trust in my ability to mod the game, it could be that I made the change and I forgot to restart the game. It sounds stupid, but this has happened to me multiple times in the past, where I was sure that something would happen the way I set it out, and then I wanted to show it off and say, yeah, see, there's my prevention that, for example, the axe wouldn't evolve and suddenly I have a death spiral, so I will still avoid the chests, they have no benefit, um, but maybe eventually, at one point, we will run into a chest accidentally, and then we will see what happens. But I'll try to avoid them, just that nothing stupid happens. I wonder, can I also go up? I can! Wow! So usually they would run below me and kill everything. I know with Golden Axe, the death, uh, the axe is insanely good. Did I say Golden Axe? Golden Axe. <laughs> golden Axe. Also, Golden Axe, the, 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 the things that the chickens make, but golden, is really good with Axe, the thing that we are throwing. But I didn't expect that we would get to such a state so ridiculously fast. We are still missing 5% cooldown. This would make a ginormous difference. It would pretty much speed up the attack speed and quotation marks by 50%, right? Well, 15% cooldown takes 50% longer, but we would reduce it by 33%, yes. I, uh, it's confusing. The point is, we would attack a lot faster. Uh, uh oh. Uh oh. 50 50, guys, please be Darkena. It's at least not an evolution. Yeah, there's Darkena, nice. Well, that's a reroll. And this also looks like a reroll. I mean, obviously. I wonder if I should go for Awake for the bonus stats. 20% on everything is actually quite a lot. Because these stats here, the character stats, multiply with the bonuses that we get from the axe. Uh, but then I should have had... No, it's fine what I have. Well, maybe no duplicator. Oh, it's okay, let's reroll. And there's Slash. How much damage are you dealing now? I want to see your ginormous crits. I will just random always now, by the way. 940. This is a base weapon, by the way. 940. Jesus Christ. I will look out to find more Clovers. Every single one that we get improves the odds that we have a critical strike. But what I'm curious about is, how strong is the Guardian against us now? Because we are incredibly powerful here. Let's see. Guardian, hello, how are you doing? So he gets hit a buttload of times, as you can see. He can't even move. I have to be careful. I need to turn around here. And there we go again. Now I need to get him up. Come on, follow me up. And now switcheroo. There we go. Yeah, th that was already it. This is a basic weapon. One of the first weapons that you get in the game. It just melted the Guardian. As if it was nothing. And let's take the Metallio. Thank you. And thank you for the correction that it's not called Metaglio. I don't even know why I thought it was called like this. Like, before you say, yeah, that's German pronunciation, because we would pronounce it chi. I frequently go to an Italian restaurant, and they said it's called 
spaghetti aglio e oglio, which is completely wrong. It's called aglio e oglio, and I don't even know why they said that. I think the reason they are Italians, okay? Just not to be misunderstood here, they are not Germans that sell Italian food. They are Italians. And I think the reason why they said it is just because all the Germans tend to say aglio e oglio. I think that is the reason. And that is what confused me here. Why I said metaglio. Why do I tell the story now while we are playing? Actually, I think it's quite nice to tell some random stories from time to time. You know, not game related. Question to you, to those that enjoy the Vampire Survivors content. Okay. Oh my god. That was amazing. So it's less about the people that would watch anything and they even join the, I don't know, streams of me just talking randomly. What do you think about me going off and talking about some other things? Not just, you know, vampire survivors related, but in general just some other things. And the reason why- is it a clover? No, that wasn't- no, okay. The reason why I do that is, well, there's only so much that I can talk about in the game. And I think, per video, I constantly repeat what I say. Some things I will always repeat because I think they are good to know. And also good to remember why I make certain choices. Or because I expect that a lot of people will comment on it and then I can already clarify, no, this was the reason why I did it. But aside from this, it would be curious for me to know what you think. When I watch a certain YouTuber for a particular game, for me it's, for me it's a mix. I like to see the game and what happens there and to get an understanding why they do it. Like for example, modded Minecraft. This is one that I really enjoy watching in general. And I want them to explain why they do X, why they do Y, why they do not do something different for example that would have also been an alternative. However, I don't want them to constantly talk about that. You know, as much fun as it is, it's also like, yeah, I get it. I've seen this mod a thousand of times. You don't need to explain the same stuff all over again. So, it would be curious for me to know how it's for you. And I know that everyone is different there, by the way. Like, I know some people just watch a YouTuber based on... because they enjoy the YouTuber, okay? Then there are people that watch a certain game with a YouTuber because they enjoy the YouTuber playing this particular game. That sounds weird, but it, it's something different from the first point. And the last one is, I don't care what you play, I will always watch it, no matter what it is, pretty much. And the funny part is, I could even make a list, that's a rosary, right? Yeah, that's sadly not a clover. I could even make a list where I split up all of my subscribed channels and say, this is this, this is this, this is this one. Like, I'm not saying I want to make a list and share this with you. What I mean is, I have different channels that I'm subscribed to that have a different purpose. Like, for some of them, I only watch them because of RimWorld or Terraria or something. For others, I watch them for anything. Efo Slab is probably, I constantly mention him when I talk about other YouTubers, but he's probably the only one where I wouldn't care whatever he plays. Like, he could also just have a black screen there, or show paint dry, and whatever he talks about, I would just listen to it. I think this is the most extreme example that I have, where I'm like, yeah, boy, I, I don't care what you do, just, just keep talking, talk about whatever you want, talk about geese flying on your roof and making a lot of noise, uh, talk about you wrestling with a bear, uh, or or the the Canadian habits or whatever you know with maple syrup and whatever stuff. I I, I honestly I couldn't bother less. Like just uh, talk about anything. <laughs> it's a lot of fun listening to him. I like his voice and I don't know. It's very entertaining in general. I don't know how this turned from what are your viewing habits into oh yeah this is what I do by the way. But but, but there we are. <laughs> And 16 minutes in, let's talk a little bit about the game because it still belongs to the game. 79 level ups in the X right now. I would say it's a very solid X. It could have been interesting to see how the weapon is if you have a... Let me actually pick this up now. It could have been interesting to see how the weapon is if we start with a huge amount of golden eggs. Like enough to max out the area stat and just experience the difference there, you know, from get-go. The only reason I actually planned on doing that, just to show it off, that you can see what is going on if you have 900% area. That is where the stat here is capped out, the area at 900%. I planned on doing this, but the problem is... Every single weapon is really busted if you have it maxed out, you know? So there's not a big difference anymore. Oh, you know what? At the very end, I will just jump on Smith. I will mod in the axe as the main weapon. Then we don't have the Vandalier annoying me. And we will check it out for maybe, I, I don't know, a moment. 
The only problem is you kind of want to have as many levels as possible, right? To max out the axe in its own stats. So checking it out for a moment will not work. Ah, uh, you know what, I will just play for a 30 minute game and get as many levels on it and we can check it out at the end. Future Dex is already hating me because I'm super far behind on schedule today. I thought the beta was coming out, it's probably coming out today or early tomorrow, but this is why I didn't prepare a Vampire Survivors video and suddenly it's 8pm and I'm like, um, okay, it's like, <laughs> where's the beta? Oh, god damn it. 140? Um, so I am taking damage. Some of these enemies are a problem. I wonder if it's a damage problem or just a coverage problem. Um, it does look like they get one shot. I think it's just me running around. Yeah, that is the actual reason. At 21 minutes, there's another Arcana that will spawn. What Arcana would be good for me, I wonder? So there's one Arcana that I kind of want to have just to see how bonkers it is, which is the bouncing Arcana. And I guess this also explains why no matter how much speed you have, it wouldn't matter. Oh no, wait a second. It doesn't bounce at the end of the screen, right? The bouncing arcana only bounces on enemies. Oh my god, but this could be absolutely bonkers. Because right now the limitation is the amount of enemies and our penetration. Given how slowly we actually cast the axes, this is not good enough. But with the bouncing arcana. Boy oh boy. And this should add 3 bounces to the weapon. Now one thing that I don't know is whether the bouncing applies before the penetration or after the penetration. If it's before the penetration this would be horrible since this would mean we only get 3 additional hits because of the 3 bounces. If it's after the penetration this would be crazy because we go from... I don't know how much penetration we have right now. I think the base value that we get from level ups is 7. And we have a max of 10 from the limit break. Yeah, that means 10, 10, 10, 10. 40 enemies would get hit in comparison to just 13. Depending on how the bouncing is applied. And yes, when the limit break reads a max of 10, this considers the base value that the weapon has. So if the weapon has a 7 like the axe, it will only go to 10. This doesn't mean that you get the limit break level up 10 times. I did test that. Uh oh. What just happened? Oh, wait. Or maybe do I not have enough damage to kill them? Is that the... No, they are just too spammy, right? Um... Right? <laughs> right, guys? <laughs> uh... Help. Let me just walk through here and see if maybe something exciting spawned. Doesn't look like it. A vacuum will be good, though. Uh, maybe I should have kept this until Red Death. Oh my god. Uh, do we have a vacuum anywhere? We have a chicken here. And an NFT. And a freeze. The freeze will be good to collect everything once the Reaper spawns. Um, and here the Arcana bat should spawn any moment. But I need to see which one it is. I don't want to pick up the wrong chest. Just in case it turns it into Death Spiral for whatever reason. Uh, let me go up that it can walk. Oh, okay, there it is. Nice. Thank you. And there we go. We are looking for the hand. Reroll. Reroll, right? Yeah, we are looking for the hand. Just had it to confirm. I frequently took the wrong one. Like when I wanted Iron Blue Will, I took the other one that bounced Hellfire and stuff like this. So let's take a look at this now. Well, this is absolutely horrible. Wait, is it? I think it bounces right away. No, but remember, they were disappearing already because the enemies flooded me. Ah, but on minute 20, right? Not on minute 21. I'm not too sure what happens first, the bouncing or the full penetration. But either way, it looks a lot better. Like, no matter what's going on, either the wave changed or the iron blue will or whatever it is, it is a lot better. If it's just a wave change, then this would be bad <laughs> because the next spam wave will then kill me. But I would say that looks amazing. It looks really good. Should I maybe go over here? I think there's a lot slower to kill them. I don't know. I think I will just stay here since again Labras can now spawn below me. Um, well, they don't really do it. But I should be out of the distance or I should be out of the sight of them. You just don't need to see the bottom where they spawn. This will put their spawn rate to the max that it can have. If they are on the screen, then it will always skip spawning them until there are 10 Candelabras on the stage overall. Since this is the internal cap, the hard cap that you can have. Um, but they are also none over here. Where are they? Nothing is spawning. Is there now stuff down here? No, there are no items. 
Like, you could say, yeah, the extras are just destroying them, but then you would have items. Every single one of them always drops items. And the way they spawn is they spawn per tile set. So a tile set roughly starts here, where I'm standing right now, at this line. And then it goes over to the other side. Let's keep walking. Still the same tile set. Still the... Oh, careful. Still the same tile set. And up until exactly roughly here. This is how far the tile set reach. And whatever tile set is currently active is the one where it spawns the Candelabras in. I'm just realizing I might actually have a problem with the bouncing. Sometimes... Oh, there was a Candelabra. Did you see it? Yeah, it just spawned. Okay, I am out of reach. That is good. Or out of sight. I mean, obviously, I'm really far up. Uh, but I'm noticing that sometimes, rarely, I do not summon any axes. There! Did you hear the gap there? You have to make it via audio cue. There is a gap, and I think it's because the bouncing goes so far that too many axes are on my screen. I think the limit for the axes is 20 or 30. In fact, I can just quickly check this. The limit is... Oh, what is this for a number? Oh, that's a very bad one. 70 axes. Wait, there's no way I have 70 axes sometimes on the screen, right? Um, well, if I always spawn two of them, then it's only 35 rotations. Could be. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, I have to be a little bit careful here. We are only 24 minutes in and it's already this difficult. I'm slightly concerned with what will happen in the future. Wait, if I turn around like this... Oh, yeah! Oh, that is... Uh, I think I have to wiggle around. Is this better? Not really. Right. It spreads them better, but it also causes these gaps that I was talking about. Yeah. Hmm. I don't fully understand what's going on with all the candelabras. We don't have a low amount of luck, so you would expect to have quite a few around. But there are none. Like, a, a few, yes. Here. Yay, gold bags. Actually, I want the freeze. Thank you for the freeze. I will walk through and I will kill all of you. We are critting for 1.3k right now. Uh, there's more footer. Thank you. Is this a Gilded Clover? I hope it's not. I hate it when that happens. Okay, it wasn't. Very good. Alternatively, instead of the bouncing, I could have also went for Gold Fever. Gold Fever is usually the most reliable one to survive if you fear of dying by taking chip damage, so just some damage over time. Because it just heals you up. Uh, okay. Man, I wish I could click on this and it would just expand and show me what level ups I got. Or maybe just also include the main weapon stats, you know. So for the X it would show, I don't know, whatever the base damage is, like 60 plus. And then it shows the bonuses that we have gotten. And then it shows the bonuses that we received. And maybe in the end it even has just an equal sign and then applies the character might bonus on top of it. To make it super easy, you know, super obvious. <gasps> Clover! Nice! So we are at 60% bonus luck. Did I just find two Clovers in one single run? That is incredibly unlikely, especially with our weapon and me constantly blocking the spawn points of them. That's incredible. So if I go back up here, how bad or how good is that? No, I think it's just as good as down there. So let's stay here. If I ever see an axe bouncing up, then I know there's a can Labrador. Actually, no, I think they just fall down. So that doesn't really help me. And if I turn around from time to time, now it clears the other side. Now it clears this side. There we go. Now it clears the other side. Now it clears this side. Yeah, I don't know if that really helps. <laughs> it doesn't feel like it. Okay, there should be a bunch of experience around. Um, wow, we got five coins. Five Candelabra spawned with 60% luck in the entire... T There's a vacuum. There's another vacuum. This is a perfect setup. Just give me the red gem. That was not the red gem that I was looking for. The red gem is another castle. Oh. Uh, where is it? Did I already get it? No, right? I barely... I didn't level up, did I? Maybe I did. I don't know. I'm not sure. There's another vacuum. Perfect. So I can take one at 29. No, I should take one now. Yeah, let me just take one now. Then I will take one at 29 minutes to get more upgrades. Oh, uh, that was not a lot, actually. Yeah, I don't know. But at 29, and then we will take one at the end. Maybe 29.45, you know, to get a final boost in levels. This wave here gives an incredible amount of experience in comparison to other waves. So I expect that we will level up at least 25 times. So let's see if we will be on 246, hopefully at least. 
My real expectation is actually quite a lot higher, but I don't want to look like an idiot. I think 260 is expected. Uh, but this also depends on how much we kill. Okay, there we go. How many levels do we get? Wow, that was horribly bad. What? Oh, yeah, okay. We're actually not getting a lot of kills here. Oh. Uh-oh. Why is it so bad? Oh, our luck. While it's great that we have a near 50% uh, crit rate, or maybe even we are at 50%, it is not enough to crit all the time. That means every other axe is pretty much useless. It doesn't do anything. And this behavior of bouncing just to one side is really bad in general. Okay, wait a second. Don't tell me there's a freeze on top of here. Freezes kill experience gain. And... Let's go. What do we have? Okay, 200... Well, no, okay, we are not even close to my estimate. I really thought we would reach the 265, but it's okay. Oh, there's a freeze. Maybe, you know, if I, if I walk around and collect a little bit more. Wait, 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 there was a freeze. Yeah. And there we go, 290 million damage. I guess that makes sense with a lot of overkill from the crits. Wow. Okay, are you ready for this? There's one big problem that I didn't consider. Because we have freezes here, and they are horrible for the killing, but, uh, let's go. There you go. This is what it sounds like. The sound is amazing. I don't know if I'm breathing fire right now or whatever is going on. Uh, this wave here is incredibly good for level ups. You can see the kill counter. And yes, the weapon has become ginormous. It obviously didn't start like this. In the beginning, I was thinking it's actually quite horrible. It did take some time until it got to the size, and I'm not even sure if it hits all the enemies. Given when they get frozen, I get barely any kills. Or at least it was like this a couple minutes ago when I saw that they got frozen. So there is benefit to have even more eggs than the 22k that I have right now. Because by having more curse, by having more growth, you will level up way way faster and reach the state that I have right now way earlier. And we will of course check out the damage that we have done here. Um, but yeah, this is what it looks like. This is why I think the axe is by far the strongest weapon. Do I have damage numbers turned on? Uh, let me quickly... Yeah. So once the Reaper appears, we will see damage values appear and we have to quickly check that. Uh, 22,000. That is, uh, that is very solid damage. And I always crit. A reason being that I have so much luck that it's just 100%. So, let's crit. I'm not gonna do this 110 times. You can forget about that. We have, uh, 5.5 G. <laughs> you know, that's a little bit more than we had in the last run. Just a little bit.